So can you t introduce yourself and your... Huh? Sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hello, I am Raphael Bob Waxberg. I'm the creator of uh, BoJack Horseman. Uh, and I'm here to talk about my new show with Kate Purdy, Undone, on right. Amazon Prime. How difficult was the production of this show? Can you go into that a little bit? Well, the production of it had many different parts to it because we shot it and then we uh, designed it and then we rotoscoped it and we animated it and we edited it <laughs> all one long snake with many different uh, pieces. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm fond of saying that, that rotoscoping animation combines the hardest parts of live action with the hardest parts of animation. Which does, I, yeah. I don't know if that's technically true because there's some other hard parts that we didn't have to do. Um, but it was a, a, a real interesting uh, process um, that, that took, took a long time and was very rewarding. Though. What was the biggest challenge you faced in doing this? Um, that's a good question. The biggest challenge, yeah. I think, is, is just kind of trying to bring it all together and make sure it all looks of a piece and, and makes sense. And this was, you know, obviously we had a lot of people working on this in, in, in different departments and different capacities. And, and we just wanted to make sure we were all making the same show and we were all on the same page as, as far as what story we were telling and how we wanted to be telling it. What, what is the title of the, the title of Undark? What does it mean to you? Um, what, is un, what does the undone title mean to me? Um, I like that it's open to interpretation, like what it means for a person to be undone. Um, there's a little bit of judgment in that, right? Like, oh, she's undone. Well, like, you know, like that's, it's not great, but also I think none of us are really done. We're all undone, you know? And so, so I, there, there's an interpretation of undone, which, which sounds like something was complete and became incomplete. But I think the truth is actually that all of us are by nature incomplete and, and we're not done yet and there's always more journey to go on. The first two episodes were awesome. What? The first two episodes Oh, thank awesome. you. Yeah, we're really proud of them. I'm really excited. So family relationships are always complicated, but it's when we need them the most that we realize the lessons that we have learned despite any differences. So how does this hold true for this series, and how is this going to be integral to the plot going forward? Yeah, well, this show is really about family, and it is about the ways that we let each other down in a family and how we lean on each other and support each other. And I think you can see even in, in the first few episodes that, you know, Alma and her sister Becca have a very tense relationship, but they're also very close. That they go out drinking, they talk about their problems, you know, it's closer than a lot of people have with their siblings, honestly. And then she sabotaged her relationship. Yeah, with the but I, and I think they also have this odd rivalry and they don't quite understand each other. And I think that's sometimes, sometimes the thing that happens with families is that you do have a closeness and you have a shared experience and you have a twin language with a person, but then there are parts of you that remain close to them that you'll never understand, uh, that they'll never understand, or that you'll never understand about them. And so I think a lot of the show is about those tensions in a family and, and the idea that you, there's no question that you love these people, but there is a question of are you really seen by them um, in the way that you want to be seen? Are, are you focus at all on um, what's the four CC arc and all that stuff because I, I when I was watching it I was like I'm just in the moment and yeah. I feel like a lot of in the moment like are you worried about that or are you more no, I think the story for the right season? I mean we, you know, we kind of for the first season, we were thinking about the first season and the story we wanted to tell. I think we'll see if there's other seasons where we want to go from there. Um, but I think, yeah, we're, Kate and I are very focused on, like, what's the story right now? What are we interested in telling? We don't want to pre-plan it so much that then we're married to some sort of thing that we box ourselves into a corner. And also, I think we want the show to feel like a question without answers, necessarily. And so I hope people aren't watching it looking for the solving of the mystery of what is happening to her. Uh, because I think, yes, that's a question that we are continually asking, but I, I think the spoiler is kind of what is happening to her is what is happening to her. And it is up to you as an audience to judge for yourself how you interpret that. Uh, you, you may or may not get more explanation than what is presented already. I think that's like a, a journalist like heaven right there. Everyone can have their own interpretation and be happy. <laughs> that's exactly right. I mean, and I hope people 
do have their own interpretations and are happy. And I'd say if you watch the show and you don't like it, try a different interpretation. Maybe you like it better. Exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like the ending of Inception. Yeah, yeah. I think, yes, our show, our entire show is like the ending of Inception. <laughs> and I wonder how long can you walk on that tightrope and maintain that ambiguity? But I think that's really interesting to think the world is ambiguous and the yeah. world doesn't have answers. And the world presents itself to you in ways in which you have to interpret for yourself what it means. And that's kind of what we're doing with the show. So when you, I mean, that's kind of unconventional nowadays. Most of the time, arcs are very transparent and mm -hmm. very predictable, yeah. to say the least. Um, considering that this, this is, a, 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 like I said to Kate earlier, um, this is a really exciting time for Amazon Studios. Mm -hmm. Considering that you're taking an untraditional approach with it, what type of confidence have they given you to go forward with this? Oh, well, they've been fantastic. I think they, you know, they really got the pitch when we brought it in. I think they were really interested in making the show as we presented it to them. And it really felt like this was a good home. It felt like this is a, a place that makes interesting shows, that is willing to take risks, that is willing to tell emotional stories about women, and that allows female characters to be prickly and hard um, in a way that is not always welcome on other channels or on other shows. Um, and so it felt like a really good opportunity to partner with them and they've been wonderful the whole way and they've, they've really allowed us to, to yeah go to those weird places you know and I've said like this is a this is a weird show guys like, I, I hope you're not thinking this is going to be your Lord of the Rings because this is like this, this show is, is not for everyone but I think the people who it is for it is really for those people and I hope that people find it and and I hope that it speaks to them because it was it was made with that in mind that we, could you just say that demographic with the people you say it's for? I know we're all at Comic Con, so we're, is it okay to say we're going to go with nerds right now? No, I'd say, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it is for a self-selecting bunch that will find themselves, and I don't I don't want to paint them in a corner and say it's just for nerds or it's just for women yeah, yeah, yeah. or it's just for Latinx people. You know, like it, it is. It's it's for it's for people who are waiting for a show to talk to them in this way, and I think those people will reveal themselves in a way that. I don't necessarily know and so that's why so I'm glad I don't have to do the marketing for yeah. the show so you know but I felt that way one of the most rewarding things to me about working on BoJack is is that the, it's an audience that finds itself and that people come up to me and go oh I never would have thought you would have liked this show but as you're describing it I see how it's speaking to you and I see what it means to you and I think this is a show that is meant to mean something to people you know it's, it's not a show I was going to say, it's not a show you put on while you're doing your laundry, but if you want to put it on while you're doing your laundry, God yeah, bless you, yeah, you can watch it too. I'm not yeah, going to kick you yeah, out of bed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Anyone who wants to watch it, but like it's, it's, I, I think it's, it's a show that can really envelop you if you're willing to be enveloped by it. <laughs> what really the, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I think the thing that's really going to hook people is the fact that there are so many aspects of especially Alma and all the other characters that are so relatable to yeah, everybody else's lives watching the show. I think so. I think, I think the characters are, are flawed in a way that, to me, makes them human. Um, it's something we really tried to do, and, and I think they're specific. You know, it doesn't feel like we're making TV characters. We really wanted to make them feel like a real family, and, and, and the relationships feel real and lived in and grounded. And we talk about, like, what are the kinds of conversations you have with someone who knows you so well, but still sometimes feels like they don't know you at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. kind of ironic that you have all these aspects of the characters that are so grounded in reality, yet we have no idea what reality really is right. going on in the series. <laughs> well, I think you need to do I mean, I think for us it was really important that we established, and that's why in the first episode there's really no magic at all, you know, for very little. Like, we really wanted this to be a show that yeah. takes place in the real world, mm -hmm. and we yeah. want it to feel like real life, and the idea is like, okay, you know, if you got pulled into the Matrix, if you got pulled into Oz, if you got pulled into whatever, okay, yeah, Neo, Dorothy, but what if it was you? What if it was you, a real person who lived in the, you know, like... If you got called to adventure, you wouldn't be like, okay, let's go. Yeah, You're right, like, oh. You're like right. no, what the shit is happening? Because yeah. the rest of my life, I've been in the real world. <laughs> like, yeah. I, this stuff doesn't happen. And how would a person react who maybe wants to believe this stuff and wants to go on that adventure, but also is knows this is nothing like anything they've ever experienced before because they don't live in a TV show. Right. They live in the real world. And so we right. wanted to establish that and find that grounding. Mm -hmm. awesome. what, this will be the last question. Cool. Thank you. Hey, what, what what creatively um, can you do in this show that that you felt restricted creatively in your other show, like Project? Like, what that's were you like really excited? That's about? a great question. Um, 
I mean, I feel very free with Bojack. I don't feel restricted a lot. I mean, I'd say, you know, it's fun to play with new characters and different relationships and kind of build some new mysteries and some new new things, you know? I, I think, yeah, the kinds of relationships we have on the show are not like the ones we have on Bojack. To tell us a story about two sisters is really exciting for me. I have two sisters, and I, I know what that relationship is, and, and, you know, we don't really explore any sibling relationships on Bojack, so that was really fun to kind of really tell a story about a family, because Bojack is maybe more a story about uh, found family or the, the people you surround yourself with, and this is a story about, like, the people that you're from, uh, and that was really exciting for me. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome job.